In the last unit, you studied linear versus nonlinear functions. Today, we're going to talk about a very specific type of nonlinear function called exponential functions. We're going to look at the graphs, the equations, and the tables of exponential functions. When you're looking at an equation for an exponential function, it's usually in the form y equals a times b raised to the x, where x and y stay the same, and a and b represent specific things. Your a represents your y-intercept on a graph. In a table, it represents the value of y when x equals 0. And your b represents your rate of change. It is a constant ratio of change with exponential, where in linear it was a common difference. Now, in exponential, this rate of change, if it is greater than 1, it represents growth. It's, the graph starts out kind of slow and goes up pretty fast. If the rate of change, your b value, is less than 1, it goes down really, really fast and then levels out. That is called decay. So, in your notes, I want you to highlight that the x is as the exponent. That is what makes an exponential function exponential. When you write it out, if it has an x in the exponents, you know it's an exponential function. So an exponential function is a function whose rate of change is a constant ratio, and that means that your y values are going up by multiplication or down by division. All right, so let's look at some equations. And remember, we said that the independent variable, which is your x value, has to be an exponent to make it an exponential equation. So let's look at these equations. Number one is y equals 9x. Well, there are no exponents at all. That means the highest exponent is 1, and that's the definition of a linear equation. So, no, this equation is not exponential. It's linear because there's no exponent that is an x. In number two, we've got uh, y equals 2 times 3 raised to the x power. It's raised to the x power. x is our exponent. So yes, this is an, x, this is an exponential equation. And number three, we've got y equals negative 2 raised to the x power. Again, our x is on our exponent. So this is also an exponential equation. All right, so now you know how by looking at an equation to tell if it is exponential. It has to have that x in the exponent. All right, now looking at a graph of exponential equations, it's going to be one of two things. It's, remember we said that um, the equation for an exponential equation, or an exponential function, the a value represents your y-intercept or your starting point on the graph and your b value is your rate of change. Okay, now looking at my first equation to the left, y equals 2 raised to the x power. I don't really have an a value, but actually I do. Now I would never write this down, but it is y equals 1 times 2 raised to the x, because 1 times anything is that thing. So really my y-intercept is 1, and notice on my graph that it crosses the y-axis at 1. And on my graph on the left or the right, same thing. I could rewrite this. I never would, but it's y equals 1 times 1 half raised to the x. So my 1 is where my graph would cross the y-axis. It is or not, yeah, the y-axis, which is my y-intercept. Now, on the first graph to the left, 2 is my rate of change. Now, it is bigger than 1, so that's growth, so I know it has to start out kind of slow and go up fast after it crosses the y-axis. And on the second one, my rate of change is 1 half. That is less than 1. So, therefore, I know the graph has to go down really fast and then level out after it crosses the y-axis. So, when you're looking at a graph, if it resembles one of these two, it is exponential. All right, so now looking at a table. Again, remember that the a value of our exponential equation represents our 
starting point or our value of y when x equals 0. And our b is our rate of change as a constant ratio. A constant ratio means going up or down by multiplication or division. So looking at our first table, let's look at how our x's are changing. Well, our x's are changing by plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, but our y's are changing by times 4, times 4, times 4, times 4. So our rate of change is multiplying by 4. It is a constant ratio. On our second graph, again, our x's are going up by 1's, but our y's are going down, and this time they're going down by divided by 5, divided by 5, divided by 5. If we never write divided by 5, we're going to write times 1 fifth, which is the same as divided by 5. So these are both examples of exponential tables because they are going either up by multiplication or down by division. Now we would, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but I'm going to show you how you could easily write this equation for the table on the right. I know that my y value when x is 0 is 10, so that's my a value, and my growth rate, I mean, sorry, my rate of change is times 1 fifth, and that has to be raised to the x power. And the graph, or the table on the left, I know that y is 8 when x is 0, that's my starting point or my a value, and my b, my rate of change is times 4 raised to the x power. All right. So now, when you're looking at a graph to determine if it is exponential, you find out if your y values or your dependent values are going up by multiplication or down by division. That means it's exponential. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is evaluate exponential functions. And all that means is that you take whatever value for x and plug it in where x is in your function. So I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to put it in my function. And remember, function is just another name for equation. And then I'm going to solve this and I'm going to get 1 third because 1 fourth raised to the third power is 1 64th. And 2 times 1 64th is 1 32nd. Or I could answer as a decimal rounded to hundredths. Now, if I ask you, and Math Excel will do so, to evaluate a function over a domain, remember that domain just means x values. So in this case, I'm going to use a table. I'm just going to make it easier. I've got x values 2, 4, and 6. I've got this equation, and then I am going to plug those values for x into that equation and solve for y and round to hundredths. All right. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you're talking to your teacher. If you don't, please do this independent practice, and then you can do your um, math Excel. Pause your video, do this in your notes, and then come back and check your answers with mine. Pause your video now. Okay, let's compare our answers. I said that this table is exponential because the independent variable, your x, is increased by 1, but your dependent variable, your y's, increased by times 3. So it has a constant ratio. Um, I said the first equation, y equals 7x to the third, is not exponential because x is not in the exponent. But the second equation, y equals 5 times 4 raised to the x, is exponential because x is in the exponent. And then the graph, I knew that 2 is my a value. That is the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. So I put a big point on my graph at 2 on the y-axis. And then I knew that 3 was greater than 1. So this had to be a situation of growth. So I kind of started out slow, crossed over the 2, and then went up kind of quickly. All right. Again, if you have questions, make sure and ask your teacher. Otherwise, you're ready for your practice.